Hello everyone, and I see it's 8.20, so I hope you guys are not going into hibernation. <laughs> uh, so I have, uh, personally to me, this is a very interesting topic. I'm going to be speaking about introduction to Google Cloud artificial intelligence and machine learning. So I hope you guys find it interesting for the next uh, 30 minutes or so. Um, so I'm a Noogler. As Adela was mentioning, uh, we have new word for, for every damn thing inside. Uh, I'm a new Googler. I joined in October. I'm working as a customer engineer. I'm based in Dusseldorf, and I support uh, field sales uh, with the technical solutions and presentations. Um, and there I am with my Noogler cap, my very prized possession. Uh, I'm going to be speaking about machine learning, AI, and how we are helping enterprises to transform their businesses, their products, and uh, helping them with the tough problems. So to pace it through for the next half an hour or so, I, I'm going to run it by uh, this agenda. I'm going to start with a bit on past and present, um, following uh, with a general introduction on AI and ML, and what specifically we are doing in Google AI and ML, followed by some real business problems we are solving, and in the end, a bit on future, which is, of course, open-ended, but uh, let's see what, what, uh, what's in store for us. So, uh, to begin with, past and the present. So on the left-hand side, maybe you, you, some of you may know him. Uh, this gentleman, his name is uh, Mr. Alan Turing. Uh, he's also known as uh, father of artificial intelligence. He, was, he wrote a paper in 1936, and it was called as uh, On Computable Numbers. Um, he proposed a concept which actually later on uh, became a computer. So he wrote it in 1936. But uh, mind you, computers were not uh, developed for next 10 or 15 years. Um, but then he went on to write another paper. Um, it was on artificial intelligence. So he introduced a concept that uh, a machine, if uh, fed by the right data, can become intelligent. But how do you measure that intelligence? How do you measure that uh, smartness of a machine? So he did a very nice thing. He uh, created this game, and it's a very famous uh, game. It's called as Turing Test. Um, it's played between three players. One of the players is a machine. Other two players are human beings. One of the human beings adds as an evaluator, and uh, he or she has to ask open-ended questions to the other two players. He or she cannot see them. And if, in the end, the evaluator is confused or is not able to determine which one is machine and which one is a human being, that means machine is intelligent. Now, the genius of this concept is that the machine doesn't have to, let's say, um, do a math or do some logic to win this test. All machine has to do is to process large amount of information, to interpret speech, what the evaluator is saying, and to communicate with a human being. And this is what um, research scientists are also doing in today, today's world, to do this Turing test. Now, that's what, that's what I found that is, it's actually very beginning of artificial intelligence. And then came AI winter. Uh, winter, they call it as when the research was very slow. And then came the neural networks. And the gentleman on the right-hand side, his name is Mr. Frank Rosenblatt. Um, I selected him to speak about because uh, he was actually uh, a scientist who wrote a path-breaking paper on um, AI, and he actually uh, introduced in that paper that artificial intelligence should actually work like the way our brain works, um, and the main component of this working are neural networks. But the limitation he was face, uh, facing was that um, he did not have these three main components. A huge data set to actually process and to find out and to feed to the machine, an infrastructure to actually hold on to so that this data becomes available, and GPUs, which is basically, we now call it as graphical, uh, graphics processing unit, or something which can compute pretty much faster. Um, he, uh, but he gave a name, he introduced neural networks, he actually called them as Perceptron, he also introduced a little machine. But then what happened was, uh, this gentleman, his name is Mr. Jeffrey Hinton, he was very much impressed with Rosenblatt, and he was in his teenage when it was 1980s or 1990s. 
and uh, he actually was inspired and he started he uh, went on to study um, computer engineering he studied and then he wrote a paper which was uh, uh, very very um, consequential in the growth of artificial intelligence the paper was uh, learning representation by propagating errors so he was inspired by the neural network concept which was proposed by rosenblatt and uh, he said that we he actually um, come up with a layer by layer concept of identifying patterns with the neural networking and with machine learning uh, and time actually was on his side because uh, it was already 1990s computer were there chips were getting smaller computers were getting smaller and internet was already upon us so because of his work in neural networking and deep learning this is what we see that we are here today um, with google photos and with your photos you are already seeing object tagging google assistant can already take calls on your behalf and um, self driving cars as my as my colleague adela previously spoke about so what do we see here again the same three things now we have huge data sets and internet uh, has done uh, an exemplary work for this um, infrastructure google has been a consequential company for past 15 years because we have been indexing all the web data on internet and web and internet data is uh, is um, is increasing exponentially and this data with exponential growth what google needed was uh, a scalable infrastructure and with that it innovated a lot in server cl uh, clustering in virtualization in open sourcing which adela was actually speaking about in her uh, section uh, but this is what we have been doing for past 15 years and now you see it as google cloud platform so google cloud platform is not something new which google has come up with it is something they have been doing uh, we have been doing in our backyard for past 15 years and one fun fact um in 2011 google introduced google brain to um as an arm of artificial intelligence to innovate in this field and google went on to hire jeffrey hinton so uh, during my research i found out he actually works with google as vp of engineering in north america right now so he's one of the uh, key players when it comes to deep learning and uh, neural networking inside google um and lastly gpus um we all know it was pioneered by nvidia uh, it is usually used in uh, when we are playing games and uh, and we have to have these uh, machines to play game with so that graphics can come up and the parallel processing can take place um so it was well suited for artificial intelligence computation as well and uh, nowadays we also have another component which is called as tpu uh, which is tensors processing units um so i'll be uh, talking about it later in my slide but um all in all uh we all are uh, at a very good stage uh, where we have all these three key, uh, key drivers with us uh, to help us with ai growth and ai uh, implementation so larry page one of the co-founder of google had visioned that artificial intelligence would be the ultimate version of google so artificial intelligence um, on an uh, high level is a mixture of uh, methodologies and technologies and theories uh, but overall artificial intelligence is not something which is going to kill human or or create robots or or uh, show show you a creepy picture of the future uh, in a nutshell or to for the sake of of simplicity we can say that it's a it's a actually a science to make things smart it's very generic but um it is truth um and to simplify it for for this talk we could say that artificial intelligence has two main um technology or or a way of working one is uh, machine learning and another is deep learning machine learning we can say is a is a concept or is a technology which is to make machine smart or to uh to make a machine more intelligent uh by uh, ingesting more and more data to the machine rather than uh introducing rule based programming into it so let's take a look at an artificial intelligence in action um so this is one of the arcade games and um if we give it 10 minutes it plays just like me slow and and very very low score give it 120 minutes and you see that it starts learning and the score is increasing 
Give it four hours and a beautiful thing happens. This actually learns to strategize. So the score is not only increasing, it starts to dig a tunnel and try to win the game. This is what AI in a game terminology is, but what it does is, it's, it's in the back. I want to take an example here of neural networks. And this is what I'm going to explain with this picture. So on the left-hand side, you see a picture which is of a dog curled up in a laundry basket. And if I don't label this picture, machine won't be able to tell that what is actually in this picture. Now, one way is, is to be actually to feed to the machine to tell them that, please find a dog, it should have a fur, it should have four legs, it should have a tail. But machine learning is actually uh, taking a huge data sets around this concept. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to feed 10,000 pictures of a dog, labeling as that this picture has a dog to a machine, and then I'm going to take another 10,000 picture and label them that there is no dog because there is no dog and feed it to the machine. And I will let machine do the learning on its own. It will do its own thing. So essentially, it's all about software writing a software to understand that what exactly this data set is trying to make me consume. So when I feed this picture, let's say, for example, when I feed this picture to a model, what it does is neural networks are basically to identify or to predict a result on the basis of studying patterns. So when I have a one single layer, it probably is studying only one pattern. But when I introduce multiple layers, it is able to study patterns of patterns of patterns and so on. So when there, is, uh, when there is somebody who is judging or where there is an outer component which is studying all the layers, they are able to identify that, okay, what is the success rate? What is the error rate? What ex exactly is the labeling? And they are able to probably give us a result such as that, okay, it is 95% dog, which means it's a dog. But one other perspective is uh, that computers or machines take really, really long time to understand this because they take a lot, lot of amount of data to understand this. In the end, it all becomes uh, when you have the result out of this huge data sets and huge processing, of course, it becomes a model which can be trained for another 10,000 purposes. But initially, it takes a lot, uh, lot of data and the time from the ground up. Um, to give you an example, if I tell a four-year-old kid that this is a shoe, and if I ask him or her after 10 minutes that what is it, the kid is not going to tell me that it's a tree. They will tell me it's a shoe. Uh, but with machine, um, it is going to take huge amount of data set and working to actually give them this intelligence. So uh, we can also say that uh, when it comes to maths, science, or rule-based programming, Machines are really, really intelligent, but sometimes they cannot really do what a four-year-old kid can do. And it is complex, because it, it is not always a data, or, or it is not always as simple as, as these two pictures. Um, it, it will not always be this simple that there is a dog and there is a mop. Mostly it is going to be like this. It is going to be... <laughs> yes. <laughs> So just think about what, what machine will go through when we, when we have to feed them all the permutation and combination so that they learn from it and they, and they can work on it. So AI and ML solution, what generally artificial intelligence and machine learning is all about, we have covered. And now I want to show you something which we did for one of our customers. Um, it's called AES. And uh, I want to show you a two minute video. Um, so please do take a look. Oops. Okay. Global warming is one of the big challenges of our times, if not the biggest challenge of our times. Now, we really do have the technology uh, to address the issue of carbon footprint greenhouse gases from the electric sector. The AES Corporation is one of the leaders in new technologies for renewables and energy storage. It's a Fortune 500 company. Our mission is accelerating a safer and greener energy future. Right now we have around eight wind farms. Each farm has different capacity, starting from 50 turbines up to 300 turbines. They cover large spans of geography and land. They're spread across hilltops and mountainsides. 
all these turbines need annual inspections. Originally, it could take up to two weeks to do one inspection. We partnered with leading drone service company, Measure. Right now, with drones, we can do it in two days. And this is safe and quick. For a wind turbine inspection, we go out with our pilots, and what we're looking for is cracks or defects, things that may need to be repaired. On a typical inspection, we're coming back with 30,000 images. Spending four weeks reviewing images, I don't think anyone's going to argue that that's the best use of a highly trained engineer's time. How do we speed that up, and how do we make it 10x more efficient? That's where machine learning and AI comes in. We've built a great end-to-end -end solution using Google Cloud's tools and platform. With the AutoML Vision tool, we've trained it to detect damage, we're able to eliminate approximately half of the images from needing human review. The remaining 50% of their time can now be very focused on identifying that damage and really determining the right course of action to remediate it. Moving from reviewing images to training machine learning models, it's a much higher order employment opportunity for people and one where we're trying to develop our team. Google Cloud has been a great partner. Their technology is consistently among the world leaders and they're just a great partner to work with person to person. At the end of the day, we won't reach the cleaner energy future without advanced tools like machine learning. Technology will allow renewable energy to be cheaper than conventional energy. Artificial intelligence, robotics, this is really what the future is all about. So great example that how image recognition works in real life. So what we are doing with Cloud AI, we, are, we have 90 plus product and features launched over the last 12 months. Uh, we have three and a half million community of members uh, working with Kegel community, which is a community of data scientists and engineers to work with new machine learning models and add on to this community day by day. Uh, we are serving 26 industry verticals already with 1,000 plus part partners and support. So what I wanted to talk about next is that all this is good, but deploying AI isn't easy when it comes to uh, real life business problems or real life enterprise problems. Most of the time it is about identifying the right use case. When you have it, then it, it should be connected with the business ambition of the, of the higher management or have a business benefits as well. Once you have that as also, then you need to find right people in your organization who have the expertise to actually deliver it. Or you should have large sum of data which you can feed into machine learning models and build output around it. And in the end, deployment and integration so that it works hand in hand with your existing infrastructure, whether it's on-prem or cloud. And what we do at Google Cloud AI, we make these implementations um, easier for you. We have the expertise as well as products to work with our uh, huge partner uh, landscape uh, where you come up and you tell your, uh, your existing infrastructure, with whether it's on-prem or whether you have legacy uh, components. Uh, but what we do together with our association with partners and solution that we create this environment for you where you have a ready-to-deploy solution, which you can use it um, easily. And while we are discussing that, I took the liberty of actually showing you what we have in our portfolio. This could be a bit much when it is about to be 9 p.m., but let's see uh, how I can show this to you. So uh, let's go from bottom to top. At the bottom, we have this uh, platform of AI and ML um, components, uh, which data scientists and data engineers, people who already have expertise and competence in this area, can start using. In the middle, we have all the building blocks, basically four segments of site, language, conversation, and structured data. Um, to take one example, for example, Vision API. It's basically used to um, do image recognition um, and so on in this area. So these are building blocks which can be plugged and play into the uh, existing infrastructure and uh, can be delivered to um, provide uh, use case implementations in existing enterprises. Uh, but on the top, it's something which is uh, with respect to ease of implementation uh, because these are some of the products which are ready to use. You can easily just uh, take them from the Google Cloud and start implementing from the day one. Um, if you have more questions, uh, please do, um, do chat if you, if you want to uh, about this. Um, 
But next, uh, I want to show you some real business problems which we are doing. Um, for example, this. Uh, Airbus is actually using machine learning models to remove cloud images from their, uh, cloud uh, spots from their satellite images. Uh, with single data engineer, uh, they were able to reduce their error rate by 4%. Earlier it was 13% when they were not implementing machine learning model. Uh, the second is about Global Fishing Watch. It's a non-profit organization. And what it did uh, was that it created a machine learning model uh, where uh, the model actually uses the GPS traces of all the vessels which are currently in this area. And with the help of these traces, they were able to identify one particular, in one particular case, actually uh, illegal fishing happening near the island of Kiribati. And um, it actually provided such a compelling proof that Kiribati was able to uh, impose uh, the largest fine ever to this particular uh, illegal fishing um, um, corporate. Um, and lastly, uh, Google data centers. As Adela was already describing, um, Google has been uh, creating and working on Google F, most efficient Google data centers for past 15 years. And um, last year or so, um, somebody in the data center actually um, created this machine learning model with the help from our friends at DeepMind, uh, which actually produced this uh, data center cooling energy um, uh, model uh, to reduce the cooling energy by 40%, 30 to 40% in during the summers. And uh, I think the most fascinating thing about this was that it took just one year to come into production from the experiment. So how it all works, uh, how does it look like? And I have taken a very small example from our um, product portfolio of cloud uh, auto machine learning. Uh, this actually is available as a graphical user interface on our console. Um, if you ever ha happen to use it, you can actually easily find it over there. And you can see that it is pretty easy to install a data set. Let's say, for example, if you want to do image recognition, you can upload images. You can start labeling them. Uh, and which, in turn, it does is it provides you with trained models. It uh, deploys it in, in and it it connects with all the network infrastructure you require. Um, and then it is all on Google Cloud, so it is easily to scale. And then as a result, it generates predictions which you want your enterprise to have out of this model. It, it can also be connected with REST APIs and with your current uh, infrastructure as well. The other thing which I wanted to highlight was a uh, cloud tensor processing unit. So uh, this is uh, something which is, of course, open source, as Adela was describing earlier. But this chip here it represents here for about 180 teraflops uh, tensor processing units. So it has four 45 teraflops uh, chips together associated. Um, next version of GPUs, as you can say, because this, this is like uh, the, the big daddy of parallel processing. And uh, nowadays, we are using this to uh, do all the AI-based research and uh, machine learning research. So uh, in the end, what could be the future? Um, so uh, enterprises are already uh, discussing the role of AI into their businesses. AI is turning from this hype to reality. It is coming into mainstream. Uh, but it, it is not something futuristic which is going to have mind of their own, or probably as we see in the movies. It's not going to be like this. It's, it's, it's something which is low cost and going to solve tough problems which are currently challenge, uh, challenges for the enterprises. And that's why these figures look very uh, interesting, that by 2021, we will have 75% of enterprises using AI, 10% new vehicles will have autonomous capabilities. And as Marlene was saying in his presentation, that you know whatever we have in our phones right now, in our pockets right now, will actually have 10 times, 20 times more capabilities in future. Will AI eventually be quantum? So uh, last month, Google announced quantum supremacy, which basically meant that Google, had crea uh, Google has created this 54-qubit uh, quantum processor called a Psychomore, uh, which comprises of uh, 
fastest uh, quantum logic gates uh, to do this benchmark testing. And uh, the target computation it delivered was actually in 200 seconds, which could take fastest computers to actually 10,000 years to complete. Um, but uh, Google AI Quantum, it's an interesting um, development which is happening inside uh, Google. And uh, I, we think that quantum supremacy or quantum computing could be a very, very good accelerator for AI's growth in future. It is going to make it more fast, more data sets could be uh, computed, more information could be produced out, and more and more could be done in this field. Um, so that's an interesting take for the future. So everything is all good, what we are doing with AI, how it is helping us, how it is not about creating robots and killing humans. Uh, but how do we govern this? You know, how do we make sure that it's actually not killing humans? It's actually not something which we see in Matrix, right? Uh, so we need to abide by a few rules. We need to, we need to uh, govern ourselves when we are working on AI, when we are working on machine learning, uh, which means that we need to have a responsible artificial intelligence. We need, to have, we need to win the trust of the users when we are doing it. And Google is, um, I mean, I personally take pride in it that we are the company which has has the strongest measures of security. And then uh, Google always foster a fairness when it comes to technology and solutions so that it is available for everyone, every time, despite of uh, division and caste and creed. So what we do have is uh, we have AI principles, which we strongly believe in and we strongly comply when we are doing all the innovation in this field. Um, AI should be socially beneficial, it should be built and tested for safety, it should be accountable to people, it should be made available for users that accord with these principles. The application we create should not um, harm, it should abide by all the international laws and uh, all the accepted norms and uh, it should abide by all the human rights activities. So. Overall, um, if we continue to foster these principles and uh, if we continue to govern ourselves, um, AI is going to be a very useful tool which we already see, that is, we are living and we are breathing every day. And in case you need, uh, want to know more about transformation opportunities which you think could, uh, could be accelerated by AI, do reach out to us and uh, I hope it was interesting for you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. So let's open it up to some questions, if there are any. So, yeah. Um, you mentioned the Auto ML yeah, uh, cloud auto. approach. Yeah. Uh, can you explain how this works? Um, so, Cloud Auto ML is uh, one of the solutions under artificial intelligence and machine learning portfolio. Um, to take an example, when we want to do image analysis, um, let's say in case of AES video, you, you had seen that wind turbines and their fans and their wear and tear was captured in the picture. Um, so you can actually upload such uh, pictures to it. Um, basically, you build the data sets. You can start labeling them um, so that, like the way they were doing in video, that you can actually identify which one is a crack, which one is just a light tear, which one needs more hardening, um, etc. Uh, you do that, and then you try to upload uh, huge data sets uh, to see that how are the results. And um, all this is happening on Google infrastructure. So if we also have similar data sets, uh, you can uh, enterprises can make use of it as well. So that's one example of Cloud Auto ML. Up. Jason. <clears throat> Thanks for the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, are you beyond images? Is it just images? And what's next in the pipeline? So it's definitely beyond images. Um, I can give you more detail uh, on it, what uh, all other things are we are doing. Um, what's in the pipeline? Uh, the pipeline is actually to make it more fast and to have more and more real life business use cases. Um, right now, other solutions we have is uh, speech to text, text to speech, 
contact center API is something which we also see with uh, Pixel phones that AI is able to handle calls on your behalf. So this is something which we see a very uh, peaks a lot of interest in call center domain. Um, so um, idea is to have more and more real life uh, based use cases uh, to enable inside Google Cloud Platform, but also to make it more fast and to um, do some uh, revolutionary work in hardware as well. Thank you. Okay, one more. Um, sorry, take me as an amateur. Um, you mentioned that you are abide by certain rules when it comes to AI to build up the trust with the customer and how you handle data. Mm -hmm. um, but you are investing a lot in this particular tech and you are bringing up with new technologies in this particular area. But eventually, it's not going to be a complete monopoly. Google is going to play along. Other competitors would come along. And how you are going to or anticipate the future that they will abide by the same rule as like you are doing now? OK, very interesting question. So let me see how I can answer it. I will answer it, actually, uh, the way I have seen Google evolved. Uh, Google has been um, strongest, uh, I would say a pioneer actually in um, innovating something and then giving it to the community, which we call as open source. That's one thing. So of course, it is not going to be a monopoly in the market for sure. Google always enjoys competition and it is going to be like this. Now, how do we make sure that other people don't make a mi misuse out of it? Uh, of course, that's something uh, as a company, Google cannot control for sure. but. What we can do is that if we are the pioneers, if we are somebody who is leading, uh, the examples we can set. If we are the company of such a huge potential and with such a vast uh, resources, if we are governing ourselves with the principle, if we are deploying something which is trusted by all across the uh, globe, uh, worldwide, uh, it would probably inspire other, other people to follow the way or to do something in this domain only. Uh, but of course, if somebody has, uh, has a mind to trouble others, so they, they will go on. Uh, but as uh, somebody who is working for Google, I can say that um, setting the right example plays a very big role where I think Google uh, has established itself. Do you have anything in pipeline to forecast these things? And do you, are you guys working on it? It's a happy flow. Yes, they will follow your example. Mm -hmm. That's all fine. But mm -hmm. the X mark, something will happen in the future. What's in stake and what you, how you are approaching this scenario? So I would say that this is something that probably uh, the, the people at Google Brain are definitely thinking about. But uh, it would not be my place to actually reveal something. But yeah, uh, I trust, uh, I would say that uh, it's a valid question and of course company like google it is expected out of it that we will have something to take care of it the, the way we can so yeah thank okay. you okay so Super. thanks a lot thank you i think it was